And we are live. As we continue to think about our journey on healthy eating, which is usually, or rather, as we continue on our journey for clean eating, which is usually synonymous with healthy eating, I thought I'd try to bring you guys some tips on grocery shopping, eight tips for navigating the grocery store, which should help you on your clean eating journey. But before we get into that, I'm Denise Jordan, and I teach women to make wise home health and beauty decisions. So if you want to learn more about running a household, subscribe. Or if you want to see reviews about products that can benefit you in your home, subscribe because I do videos on those topics all the time. So hit that subscribe button and tap that little bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Okay, let's get into it. I went to the grocery store the other day and right in the middle of the store, front and center, was row upon row upon row of cheesy crackers and box cookies and all kinds of snacky kinds of foods. And I was looking for produce. And where did I find it? Around the back and way over to the far corner of the store. So it kind of reminded me of a truth that I learned a long time ago. And that is, if you want to do healthy eating, you got to eat around the perimeter. You've got to go around the edges of the store to find the things that you need. So I thought this would be a good time to share some tips with you on grocery shopping, on how to be successful when you go Krogering or whatever else it is that you do. So, hey, Loretta Living, it is good to see you as well. And let me just say, for those of you that are here on the replay, I really think you will enjoy what it is we do today. But for those that are here live, how you doing? And I do appreciate the time that you take to drop in and spend with me this evening. So as I was saying, I thought this would be a good time to share these eight tips on how to be successful when you go Krogering or wherever else it is you go to do your grocery shopping. And I am going to reference a particular website, and this is from the Parkview Health website. Parkview Health is where I get my medical care. And I used to collaborate with the community health nurses with Parkview Health, where we would be in the community and we would be teaching about health and nutrition and things like that. So I knew I would find exactly what I needed to share with all of you guys. And I will link that below so that you can go on and check it out on your own. So let me get into it in case you guys just heard the hubby just got home. So I don't want to take too much time here down in this particular space. So one of the first tips that I want to share with you is to always make a list. And that's pretty much a no brainer. It's like make a list before you go to the store so you know exactly what you need and you're not tempted to pick up other items. Whenever I don't make a list, I always end up buying lots more than what I need and that's when I end up with all of the bad stuff, the snacks and the candies and the ice creams and things like that in my cart. So make a list is the first thing you wanna make sure that you do. The second thing that you want to do is to make sure that you make a meal plan. So make a meal plan before you go grocery shopping. So you take a nice little inventory of what you've already got. Then you know what you need to purchase to go along with the meal plan that you want to have that particular week. So that when you go shopping, you pick up exactly what you need. One of the things that Fly Lady Cat encourages us to do is to use our desk day to make our meal plan and our shopping list. So for me, that day is Wednesday. So on Wednesday, I decide what we're going to have for the week. I look at my pantry. I look in the fridge. I look in the freezer. And then I buy what I need to buy, or rather I put on the list what I need to buy to make those meals. And when you are looking at the meals you need to make, keep in mind all the meals you need to make. So it could be breakfast, lunch, 
dinner, and snacks. And now that school has started, it could also be school lunches that you need to pack. So whatever it is you need to prepare should be on that plan. And then put those items on your shopping list. The other thing you want to focus on, as I said earlier, is to shop the perimeter of the store. You want to shop around the edges. You want to shop on the outside because they're fresh produce, they're lean meat and protein items, they're dairy. Those things are around the edges. They're around the walls of the store and usually not in the center aisles. So that's where you want to shop first. I see Thrifting Adventures has jumped on, so it's good to see you as well. So as I was saying, you want to hit those fresh produce areas first. Pick up the things that you need there. Check those items off your list. And then before you head into the interior of the store, buy as much fresh fruit and veggies as possible. Then when you head into those center aisles, you're checking those things off your list and then look for the healthier choices like whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds. So you can use those healthy protein items such as your um, beans and seeds and those kinds of things. So when you hit that center aisle, look for the good stuff, the whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds. The next thing you want to think about, and it's really a good tip for right now, is to shop in season. When fruits and vegetables are in season, they are readily in abundance in your grocery store and the price is usually pretty cheap because they're so readily abundant. So what you want to do is stock up on your fruits and veggies in season and then consider freezing them. So for example, I eat a lot of um, smoothies, purple smoothies. So I stock up on blueberries when they're in season and then I freeze them so that in the winter time when the blueberry prices are higher, I've got some of my own blueberries in the freezer that I can fall back on. I'll also stock up on frozen uh, on berries as well, it's like strawberries. Um, I'll stock up on those as well. So blueberries and strawberries are plentiful here when they're in season. And I freeze as many as I can so that when I'm making my smoothies in the morning and I'm in a hurry, I can just shake out a few out of the bag and I'm good to go. <clears throat> Sorry about that. For some reason, my throat always gets dry when I'm doing a live stream. All right, so we talked about shopping in season. The other thing you want to think about doing is reading food labels. When you're trying to eat clean, you have got to learn to read your labels. And keep in mind that the fewer the ingredients, the better, because that's going to mean the item is just a little bit cleaner. And when you're reading those labels, pay attention to uh, serving sizes or a number of servings sodium or salt content, whether it's not, it's, it's got any added sugar um, or what other ingredients it might have like high fructose corn syrup, hydrogenated oils, preservatives, and artificial ingredients or food colorings or flavorings or something like that. Keep in mind when you read the label, you want to look for those things. If there's an ingredient on that label that you can't pronounce, it might not lend itself well to eating clean. So just think about that. So for example, I have this bottle here or jar here of natural peanut butter and it's creamy and it says peanut butter spread made with 90% peanuts. When I look on the label that's right here and, you tr and I read what the label says, as far as the ingredients, it says Peanuts, sugar, contains 2% or less palm oil, salt, molasses. That's it. And it says it contains peanuts for those with peanut allergy. So read the label. I pulled out this can of black beans that I picked up from Kroger. This one is a no added salt. So that's another goodie right there. And when I read the label, what does it say? What, what are the ingredients? And you can look at the ingredients right here. 
and it says ingredients black beans and water so those are the ingredients in that I got a bag of frozen green beans right here that I picked up at Kroger's and what does it say on the ingredients What's it say on the ingredients? Italian green beans, and that's it. So when you can't buy fresh, frozen is the next best thing to it because many times frozen doesn't have all those added ingredients or preservatives as well. The other thing to think about is you wanna shop the rainbow. So now what does that mean? That means you wanna shop foods that are all different colors. The beautiful greens, uh, some of the green vegetables, and then the yellows and oranges of corn or um, uh, tomatoes and peppers and carrots and those kinds of things. Um, so look at the different colors of foods and your, your plate should be quite colorful. So when you're buying your groceries, your grocery cart should be full of colorful items. And then when you make your dinner, the dinner plate should be full of colorful items as well. So we've got quite a few people jumping on with us tonight. I see Sylvia from Silly Mommy for Life. And then I saw Kathy Carter and a few others that jumped on. So Thrifty and Adventures, so hello everyone. And thank you so much for joining me as I continue to share tips on Clean Eating Tip Tuesday with Michelle at My Everyday Housewife Life and Luann at It's Always Something Around Here and Lisa's Cottage because it's Tip Tuesday for clean eating. So I thought I would share some tips on grocery shopping. And thank you, Thrifty and Grandma, for saying these are great tips. You know, for the most part, most of this stuff is common sense, but it's not common if you haven't been taught. So see, there's the thing. So as I said, stock up on, you know, eat the rainbow, shop the rainbow, and then eat the rainbow, and then stock up on frozen fruits and vegetables because when your fresh vegetables are not in season, as I said, your frozen vegetables are your next best option. And when I looked at the label, the label said the only thing in here was Italian green beans. There weren't a lot of other preservatives and things like that. So keep that in mind. And then tip number eight, the last tip is look for plant-based proteins. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you're going to look for things like dry beans, lentils, nuts, seeds, and then whole grains. And these things tend to be pretty inexpensive. So now Sylvia says this is right on time because she's about to go grocery shopping in a few days. So Sylvia, in just a second, I'm going to ask you about that. So let me write that down so I can come back to that question because I don't want to get distracted since I want to try to keep this on time for those people that just want to hear the tips and then jump off. So I'm going to come back to that. But look for your plant-based options. And when I got ready to, um, to kind of put some information together to think about, like, what did I want to share with you guys? I, I used the website, as I said earlier, from Parkview Health. And it's, this particular article is called uh, Navigating the Grocery Store. And the web page was prepared by a um, registered dietitian. And she had that article or this article on there and there were several others. And there's another one on there about the six o'clock scramble, which has to do with, you know, between five and six o'clock. We're, we're scrambling to get dinner on the table when kids are out of school, the hubby's home, all that kind of thing. So this website has lots of great information on how you can help your family to eat healthy. So one of the things that I was wondering about was what's your plan when you want to get your family on track to eating healthy and to eating clean? What is it that you do? You know, what do you do to go about do that? Tell me in the comment section below if you're on the replay and you can just jump on with me live now. When you're trying to get your family on track, what do you do to get them to eat healthy? So Sylvia, you said you read the same article because great minds are thinking of like, well, see, here's the thing. Right now, it's back to school time. And if you think about it, back to school affects more than just those who have kids going back to school. My children are all grown. I don't have anybody at home. It's just me and the hubby. But 
back to school time affects me because one day a week, one afternoon a week, I go out and I teach a class from 9 to 12.30 on a Wednesday. That means I have to plan ahead for that dinner on Wednesday so I'm not scrambling trying to figure out what I'm going to cook when I get home. The other thing is that for back to school time for my family is that activities start ramping up in the city where my husband works. So that means he might be going out to work a little bit more. So then I need to prepare meals either at different times or um, maybe do a healthier lunch or heartier lunch than dinner, depending upon what time of day he's working. For those of you that's got kitties and you got to get them up for breakfast, you got to get them on the bus and then you got to get them home and you got to give them a snack and then dinner, homework and bed. What are you doing in regards to meals? So you got to plan ahead. So you have to think about all those things. So now, Sylvia, you were going to say that you're going to be shopping in just a little bit. So you want to start meal planning and you want to start switching up meals. Well, one of the things you can consider doing is doing some meal planning for maybe two weeks. A month might be a little long if you're just starting, but I'd say start meal planning for maybe a two week period. And on the Parkview website, they did have some tips for meal planning, but you can also go to other websites and find some on meal planning. Oh, so Sylvia, you want me to do a video on how to meal plan? Oh, sure, I can do that. I can definitely do that because I know how to meal plan. But for the most part, when you think about how to meal plan, you're thinking about a protein and then you're going to think about your veggies. And unfortunately, in the U.S. diet, we tend to think about a meat as our center and then build the fruits and vegetables around it where we should really be thinking about the fruits and vegetables with just a little bit of meat. So when you're thinking about meal planning, though, how is it that you want to plan meals in your family? So Thrifting Adventures says she's going to she's got to run. She's going to cook a steak for dinner. Well, typically, if people are having steak, they're going to either have some kind of a potato with it, maybe a baked potato or some kind of steak fries and then a green veggie like broccoli or something like that. If you're looking at trying to plan meals for the week, one of the things I consider is, I would suggest, is maybe on Sunday or Saturday or Sunday, cook a couple of meals that are big and that you can maybe double up on those two days and save one of those meals and put them like in a freezer container and set them aside for another day during the week and then do the same thing on Sunday or cook something and put it in the uh, freezer. So, yep, so Thrifting Adventure said she was going to have potatoes and broccoli. And that was my thought. I thought she's probably going to have potatoes and broccoli. So Sylvia said they do eat a lot of meat, but she wants to incorporate more fruits and vegetables. So what you might want to do is either consider having maybe a meatless meal, like maybe a meatless Monday or something like that, or just smaller portions of meat. So, for example, on Mondays, say if you have a meatless Monday or uh, something like that, then maybe you might do macaroni and cheese on Monday and have cheese as that protein base. Or maybe you might want to do uh, like a pot of chili, but instead of having uh, meat in the chili, you might use some kind of, a, you know, maybe a variety of beans in the chili with the cheese as a garnish and then have some cornbread and something like that. So think about how you can maybe one day a week skip a meal that you don't put meat in it and I know when we were younger and I would try to do meatless meals my husband was not real excited about a meatless Monday but he did eat it so now Luann says they eat their vegetarians there and there's so many meatless options Luann what are some of the meatless options that you eat for me when I'm doing a meatless option it's either going to be a vegetarian um, a, a vegetarian chili, a macaroni and cheese, and I've got a vegetarian um, a vegetable soup that I have made from time to time that my granddaughter loves. And I might do uh, something with uh, black beans and um, garbanzo beans or something like that. Or we just don't have any meat that day. Maybe I might make, um, I don't know, you could have like some collard greens, which tend to be kind of hearty, and have some cornbread muffins with those. Maybe have some beans or black eyed peas on the side or something like that. What do you cook, Luann, when you're doing your meatless options? Tell me some of, share with me some of those. Because I would like to get into more 
meatless options as well. As I continue to try to work on getting my cholesterol down, I need to be eating more plant-based diet. Definitely more of a plant-based diet. So I was hoping Luann might share with us some of the, the um, meatless meals that she has. You need to fix your shirt. But um, I... Um, Oh, she shared today in her video. Okay. They've been having tostados and tacos, black bean burgers, those kinds of things. So, yeah, I love black beans, and I do have a black bean burger recipe. I got it from a cookbook, a Rachel Ray cookbook, and she has a great black bean burger in there. So Loretta says sometimes they'll do a meatless breakfast. They might do blueberry pancakes or something like that. So breakfast is another good option to do meatless, and you can replace cheese or... Um, or, or maybe eggs for your protein options, that kind of thing. So, yeah, you can do that. I like those options. I think it would be good. So I have not looked at the videos today in our playlist on the clean eating. It has just been one of those days, and I didn't want to be distracted when I've got my own video to do. But yeah, Rachel Ray has some great no meat recipes and I've got her big orange cookbook and there's several in there. And then another cookbook that I've got is the um, Oprah Winfrey's of, I think it's called, I can't remember the name of it, but it's one of the cookbooks that I got, Weight Watchers. She did it. It's a beautiful book and it's got a lot of vegetarian options in there as well. So yeah, Luann, I didn't watch them because when I've got my own video to do, I didn't want to be distracted or like to borrow anybody's ideas. So, but I did want to make sure that you guys know the website that I'm talking about. And it's called Parkview Health. And uh, they, it's a wonderful website with a lot of different resources on healthy eating, foods for children. And then this is one of the things that got me to thinking about it. I was sitting in my office and I had this in a crate that was right on top of my filing cabinet. And it is a healthy grocery list. And I thought, well, why don't I talk about this healthy grocery list? And then I thought, well, rather than the grocery list itself, well, why don't we talk about the experience of going to the grocery store? Because if you don't get that right, the grocery list may or may not help. But this is really a great option. But I could not find this on the website. This is one of the resources we would use when we would go out to the community and talk about nutrition. But it shares some of the same things that I just mentioned. Like it says, for good health, you want to emphasize fruits and vegetables in abundance. Model unsaturated fats as your main fat, such as extra virgin olive oil, canola oil, nuts, seeds, and avocados. So I've been using a lot of avocado oil in my smoothies and also in my cooking and in my salads. And I've been making some of my own salad dressings that you guys have probably seen. I've made a vinaigrette dressing and a strawberry vinaigrette that I made with the vinegar that I made. As well as, you know, made the dressings. And I have to say, I am really glad that you, Luann, and uh, Michelle, and Lisa encouraged us to do this clean eating experience. But yeah, meal planning is so helpful because not only do you save money, but you also have healthier options. And then you don't end up repeating foods unnecessarily. You don't necessarily get bored with your options. So Sylvia used to go to a healthy nutrition class at her daughter's school. And that's one of the things that Parkview Health will do here. They have this program called HEAL, H-E-A-L, and something about it has something to do with healthy eating and they will go into the community to a church, to a community center, and they will um, bring like a six week class there where you get to like practice cooking different healthy options right there at the community center. And it's so much fun. And they'll maybe get maybe one of the ladies at the church to kind of help to lead the program. And they'll also send out a nutritionist. So they're really a lot of fun. You might consider what are some of the options in your community that you might be able to find something like that because those are really a lot of fun. So 
So I will encourage all of you guys that once you're done looking at this live stream, do go over and um, take a look at the videos in the playlist because there's so many examples of clean eating. And like uh, Luann just said, her video today was on vegetarian options for clean eating. So think about that. So. And when you're buying the frozen foods, let me just also add this. When you're trying to eat healthy and you're buying those frozen foods, you want to add you want to avoid those frozen foods that have a lot of butters and sauces. So some of those uh, prepared frozen foods that have all kind of fancy sauces and things like that, they're probably not very healthy. So hey Tashi, how you doing? You know what, it is so nice to have you guys jump on and support me in this particular live stream. We are talking about clean eating and I was giving eight tips on how to navigate your grocery store and how and what made me start thinking about it was when I went to the store and right in the middle of the store, when you walk right in, they had all these cookies and crackers and all this stuff that really is not healthy. The other thing is, you know, it's not necessarily cheap to eat healthy. So if you're trying to feed a family on a budget, Healthy eating is a struggle, and the struggle is real, which is why I say try to shop in season. So get it plain frozen and then season it yourself. That's the best way to do it. So, so there you go. So if you like this video, I've got a couple of others that I'm going to link above and below and check those out. But definitely when you leave here, go over to the clean eating playlist and uh, check out all those videos so that you can see what are some of the options. I know some of the ladies have been sharing options on some of the foods that they've actually purchased. So, they, so you got get to see their grocery haul. People like Luann are actually sharing some of the meal options that they've been preparing. Vegetarian meals and those kinds of things. And then myself, I've been trying to come at it from a, a teaching perspective. I've been sharing tips on healthy eating and that kind of thing. So yeah, you've got to be, be sure to check some of those out. So unless you guys have some other questions about this, I don't think I have anything else for you. So, so do you guys have any questions? I know one of the things that Sylvia said was she wanted me to do a video on how to do a meal plan, so I will work on that. Because one of the things, you know, like my focus, my target audience are the homemakers that are out there. And, you know, my homemaking sisters and brothers, it could be you're making a home just for yourself. It could be you're making a home for your children, for you and the hubby or whatever. But whoever is sharing that home with you or if you share it alone, you're still making a home, even if you're making your own home. And there are things that you need to know. And meal planning for one is just as important as meal planning for six. So I will come up with a video on how to meal plan. I'll do some on meal planning for two, and then I'll come up with some for meal planning for a family. So there you have that. So I'm going to just go ahead and tell you guys good night, and thank you so much for joining me. And if you like this video, like I said, I've got some I'm going to link above, and there'll be some that I'm going to link below. So Tashi's working on meal planning and essential vitamins. So that's a good idea, too. I don't talk much about vitamins. I guess I don't feel like I know enough about that. But yeah, essential vitamins are important, too. And you can find out when you look at your labels, too, how much of the recommended daily allowances of various vitamins are in it. So keep that. Uh, so think about that as well. All right. So I am going to run, ladies, so I'm going to make those links above and below. And then for those of you who are new, I'm going to say, just so you know, I've raised three children. I've managed a home for more than 45 years, and I am a nurse by profession. So if you want to learn more about running a household, cooking and cleaning and laundry and health and beauty, subscribe. Honey, could you turn it down just for a second? I'm almost done.
So if you want to learn more about running a household, cooking and cleaning and laundry and health and beauty, subscribe. I would love to have you as a member of the TNT community. In the meantime, this is Denise Jordan saying goodbye. I will see you in the next video.